Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we have the whiskeys and bourbons to look out for in the month of April. Run the video. All right then folks, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Whiskey Cove, where we will be looking at the whiskeys and bourbons that are gonna be released in the month of April. As always, uh, go back and check some of the other previous months because sometimes there's some delays and uh, some of the release dates are not exactly specific that I find out online. With that being said, we don't have a sponsorship for today's channel. Uh, we did that in an earlier video. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So recently I posted a poll on the YouTube page just asking how people felt about the advertisements the sponsorships that we were doing in the Whiskey Cove. We're doing just one video a month that includes a sponsorship, and that's because Zbiotics has been working with us for multiple videos. And then sometimes we'll include a second one, and it's only like a two minute sponsorship or two minute advert in the video, but it really does help the Whiskey Cove on like the reviews and getting new bottles down here. Because I would say reviewing whiskey has got to be one of the most expensive uh, uh, whiskey channels uh, or YouTube channels to have, if you like. It's not like I'm giving reaction pieces on other stuff people are doing you're buying whiskey and you're reviewing it which I love and I'm not complaining about but what the sponsorships and the advertisement definitely really help however what I want to do to kind of engage more the community we'll be posting polls on the website on the uh, the YouTube page monthly we did one just recently asking the question what whiskey we should review this month so what we'll do in the poll is we'll put like half the whiskey will be the whiskey we have in the whiskey cove the other half will be a bottle that I have to go out and buy with some of that sponsorship money which is awesome because it gives you uh, the viewers the video you exactly want so definitely look out for them as well also we recently did a video with Doc Swinson so which will be posting here very shortly if you want to go and see the full interview that I did with Jesse Parker who's a master blend over there go over to the Whiskey Cove's Patreon uh, the link is down below in the description patreon forward slash the Whiskey Cove where you can watch the full interview there it's about 15 minutes uh, you don't have to be signed up as a as a supporter on Patreon it's, it's available for everybody to watch but if that's something that you want to do to support the channel whilst you're there we appreciate that too go over to the whiskey cove's website the whiskey cove dot square dot site to go and purchase some excellent whiskey cove glassware premium glassware it's the best the money can buy at a very affordable prices to your doorstep and another way to support the whiskey cove so thank you for you folks at home being patient with this little bit of spiel and just a few quick updates for you at home but with that being said let's delve into today's video and that is the whiskeys to look out for in the month of april so first up and it's getting to that time of year now. It's Kentucky Derby time. So this ball does get released back end of March, spring into April for the Kentucky Derby, which is May 7th. So this year uh, is going to be it's going to be celebrating the, uh, the 150th year of so celebrating the most exciting two minutes in sport, which is what I think they're referring to uh, the race in general. So the artwork on this ball is created by Kentucky native Wiley Cordino, known for his bold, repetitive patterns and his signature roses. Uh, his painted are domed in roses uh, depicts a racing thoroughbred covered with red roses. So that's the design on the front of the ball. So unlike regular makers mark, this is going to be a one liter ball it costs a little bit more than makers mark uh, sorry makers mark it costs a little bit more than regular woodford reserve uh, however the information i was able to find the regular woodford reserve is six to eight years is a blend of six to eight years however this one is a blend of 10 year bourbons which i never knew that i thought that it was just the same juice and a different ball however specifically to this year i was able to find out that it's a blend of 10 year bourbons so one liter ball of a blend of 10 year bourbons for around $50. I think that's a pretty darn good deal in today's market. If you think of the 10 year 1924 by Old Forester, which was 130 plus dollars uh, and some of the other bourbon companies or bourbon distilleries that have been putting out age statement bourbons recently Jack Daniels, his price has gone up as well. I think this is really good value for money. So if you like, Woodford Reserve and you like older bourbons, this might be the one for you. I think I'm going to pick this up just based upon that information. So like I said, it tastes, uh, so it's the regular mash bill of what Woodford Reserve is just using older barrels there. 
So next up, we have a new release from Redwood Empire. Uh, they, we had two releases from last month. That was the Foggy Knoll and something else. I can't remember what it is. But they are releasing their first ever Wheated Bourbon. Uh, they might have done some distillery only releases for Wheated Bourbon. I wasn't able to find any. So I think this is the first ever Wheated Bourbon. And that is the Screaming Titan. This is going to be 59% corn, 30% wheat, 7% rye, and 4% malted barley. ABV is going to be 43% ABV or, or 96 proof. So they go on to say that this is exquisite addition to the Small Lot series captures the essence of the majestic landscapes in Northern California. This wheated bourbon features a unique four grain bill with at least 30% wheat. It's a testament to the distillery's dedication to crafting extraordinary spirits. Uh, so he says each barrel that they've used to blend in here is aged a minimum of five years. Uh, and then it's a process uh, that embodies the distillery's passion, patience, and a pioneering spirit. So I don't know if you know much about red, and buy it there in Northern California. A lot of the proceeds that they make from their whiskey do go back into a conservation effort in some of those forests in California there as well. So we're getting great whiskey. Uh, the distillery is making enough money so it can continue to put out good whiskey. And then the money's also going back into forests and trees that uh, kind of makes us go full circle because a lot of wood goes into the process of creating bourbon because it's always new charred American oak barrels. So it's always a brand new American oak barrel as well. So MSRP on this is going to be about $89.99 which falls in line with those other two bottles. And for a wheated bourbon, if I can see this, I think I will pick that up. I do like Redwood Red Empire and I also would be Really interested to see how their wheated bourbon stacks up. Big wheated bourbon fan, really looking forward to that. Should be able to find it here in Colorado. Everybody else, you might have a little bit harder time in some other states, but uh, the western states, the central states generally have a pretty good time of finding this. Some of you folks tell me on the east coast that you can find it as well, so it just kind of sees how many barrels they'll drop of this. Moving then from Northern California, up to the Pacific Northwest, and that is Washington State, because Doc Swinson's are releasing two new bottles in the month of April. The first is going to be the Golden Hour. This is a seven year straight rye whiskey finished in rum barrels and then tawny port barrels, which is super interesting because you don't see this sort of dual finish in anywhere in whiskey, or at least I can't think of any. You get the sweetness, the cane sugar, uh, the burnt sugar, and, and like the caramel of rum. And then you also get the jamminess, the fruit forward, floral notes of tawny port. So you carry it like a really nice like jam compote is what I'm expecting. And then a little bit of that rice spice coming through. So this is going to be seven year, four month. And then it's, they usually use MGP juice. However, they do source from Kentucky and Tennessee as well. Uh, and then also the second one is going to be the Tres Amigos. And just like the name suggests, uh, this is going to be a rye finished in rum again. And then in Anejo tequila casks. So the sweetness of rum, the sweetness of the tequila, the spice of the rye. And and also the woody aged notes from the Anejo oak barrels. And then obviously it is seven years. Really like that they use in not just five, not just six, but seven year age statements on these. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good age statement for a craft distiller, even though a lot of the stuff that they do is sourced. Uh, this is gonna be coming in at 53.1% or 106.2 proof. The Tony Paul one's coming in at 52% ABV and 104 proof. Usually Doc Swinson's kind of dual or triple cast finishes sitting around the 60 to $80 mark. So probably expect somewhat between that. I've been on a little bit of a Doc Swinson's hype train lately because uh, I've been trying them quite a lot lately throughout the last year. Uh, and they've just been putting out some incredible, incredible stuff. So definitely don't sleep on Doc Swinson's. Ask your local liquor store owners if they can get some and then definitely look out for these because Doc Swinson's like to do one and done. So if you see them on the shelves, definitely grab them because they're not gonna come back anytime soon. Definitely looking forward to this golden hour that Tony Port and Rum finish sounds pretty exquisite. Moving on and then going into Kentucky and that is because Jim Bean are back with the new Booker's release of the year. That is the 2024-01 Springfield Batch. So Springfield Batch is in honor of Booker No, uh, who was raised in Springfield, Kentucky. So he, uh, he goes on to say that he worked on many farms when he's grown up to tobacco fields. And then this batch is made up of five production dates stored in four different aging warehouses. The age is seven years and seven seven months, eight days to be specific, and then 124.5 proof or 62.25% ABV. So the breakdown of the barrel storage is going to be 
17% came from fifth floor of a nine story warehouse G, 7% came from a fourth floor of nine story warehouse H, 31% came from a fifth floor of seven story warehouse Z, and then 45%, which is obviously the vast majority, came from fourth floor of seven story warehouse three. So I haven't bought bookers since 2021, going back a few years now, three years actually, I think, because the 2021-02, so more or less three years. And I think it's probably close to me buying another one at this point. We'll wait until we see one of these batches this year and which one comes out as the best. And then I think I'll try to get one of those. So like say if this Springfield batch comes out and people are talking all like crazy, then I'll buy this one. Because the MSRP on the website still states that it's just $90. Well, I say just $90, $90 is a lot of money. But what I mean by just $90 is that around the country, it's more, it's always more than $100. But if you, you know, if it was on sale at the distillery, it would be $90. So they don't really have much of a control outside of that. So if you do, go at different stores expect to see a markup on bookers because liquor stores do have a tendency of marking bookers up for whatever reason but at the end of the day it is only a, a seven year uh, cast strength bourbon you can find you probably have better again but better value in knob creek however sometimes these bookers do hit and when they do they are phenomenal juice there so that was bookers 2024-1 springfield batch next up and staying in kentucky that is the yellowstone rum cast finish we have another rum cast finish this is going to be 75% corn, 13% rye, and then 12% malted barley. So this is going to be their regular bourbon, small batch bourbon, then finished all in a rum casks. So four years is going to be the age of the bourbon, or at least four years. And then it's only going to spend nine weeks in, in a rum cask from Cuba, interesting, interestingly enough. Uh, nine weeks isn't a lot of time, so the flavor must then impart it onto it quite quick. And it's interesting that they were able to get it from Cuba, because I didn't know you were able to get stuff from Cuba in this country. However, it is from Cuba. I wonder if it's the Havana Club uh, rum, because that would make for a really interesting whiskey. Uh, so part of the proceeds are from Yellowstone whiskey in general are donated to uh, National Parks Conservation Association, so another distillery that likes to uh, donate proceeds from this whiskey. So this is 50% AV or 100 proof. Recently we talked about the Yellowstone whiskey because they did a, uh, a double oaked whiskey and they also did the uh, single malt, American single malt. MSRP on this guy is only going to be $50. They do keep their prices low. Yes, it is a UFO whiskey. Uh, I haven't tried this one. I haven't tried the double oaked. I haven't tried the single malt, but the small batch and some of the single barrels are pretty good. Uh, but for $50, uh, you know, if you're looking for uh, cheaper whiskies that offer you something different, a single malt, a double uh, oaked uh, rum finished one, then $50 is, uh, you know, that's probably going to be worth a little bit of your money just to take a shot at something. So that was Yellowstone rum cast finished, maybe just in time for the summer. So then lastly, before our honorable mentions, and we are going to Louisville, Kentucky, and that is because Mictas are going to be releasing their Barrel Strength Single Barrel Rye for the first time uh, in a couple of years, I believe. So uh, the Mictas president, Joseph Magliocco, said, I'm excited that our master distiller, Dan McKee, and our master of masturation, Andrea Wisdom, felt that this whiskey was ready. Mictas president goes on to say that this rye is really something special. The Mictas US Barrel Strength Rye is a single barrel product, and the average proof of the Bar uh, barrels in this 2024 release is 110 proof or 55.1% ABV. It's, it's, it's enormously expensive for us to barrel or distillate at a lower barrel proof entry. 103 versus the permissible 125 entry proof. So the highest you can barrel is up to 125. But then he goes on to say that uh, the result as this product shows is a richer, more complex whiskey. So Mick does always uh, barrel their whiskey at really low ABV compared to the industry standard because they feel that it offers a softer more complex and richer and sweeter tasting product which i completely get and if you've tried a lot of mictas you can resonate a little bit there as well so the msrp on this barrel strength single barrel rye is going to be 109.99 expect to maybe see a little bit more than that. it is going to be an allocated item but like i said it hasn't been in uh it hasn't been in production for the last two years they just felt like something wasn't quite right with it much like the mictas uh 10-year bourbon the took a hiatus for a year there as well. 
mash bill on this. I wasn't able to find out the specific mash bill on this barrel strength, but I expect that it's just a barrel strength version of their regular rye, which is 53% rye, 33% corn, and then 14% malted barley. So a decent amount of corn in that mash bill that might lend to a little bit of sweetness to kind of uh, counter out maybe the spiciness of the rye. But you have a couple of Mictus ryes here. I've had, uh, these are not open, but I've had some of this stuff before. And I, I really like the Mictus rye because they're not high ABV. They're a little bit sweeter and they're all approachable for a lot of people. So if you're someone who's trying to get into rice, uh, I wouldn't start with a barrel strength rye, but maybe try that they make the single barrel rye because this is coming in at a lower ABV because that's only 42.4% ABV. So definitely a good entry proof for those who are maybe trying to get into rye and don't want to have their palate blown off by the spicy nature of what is rye. So, moving into the three honorable mentions that we have for you folks at home. First up is High West, are back with their Boo Rye for 2024. MSRP is $125, coming in at 46% ABV and 92 proof. This is only available in Utah, but however, uh, don't just think you need to be at a distillery or you need to be there at a certain time. Last year's Boo Rye was still sitting on the shelves come Christmas time. So if you're ever traveling through Utah, definitely stop at a few liquor stores or you can download the Utah like DABC app and then you should be able to find the Boo Rye in certain stores and it shouldn't be too much of a hard hunt is what I'm told. When I went out there for the Midwinter Nights Dram release I looked in a few liquor stores we did a video of the one in Park City and uh, they had it on the shelf there as well so $125 if you're passing through Utah definitely stop and pick it up because last year's 2023 release was fantastic. Uh, number two All Forest are back on a new edition of the 117 series this is the Angel Share $60 and 55% ABV or 110 proof. It only comes in the pint size bottles, but they uh, they normally have them there at the distillery when they get released. If you do like a tour and stuff, uh, right around when they release them, they usually will sell it to people who do the tour. At least that's what they did for me when I was there last time. And they will also sell you two bottles as well, which is awesome. And then lastly, Rebel 100, uh, are back with their Luxro, or Luxro are back with the Rebel 100 six year bourbon, which is coming at a 50% ABV, 100 proof and then that is going to be around sorry $60 so $60 for a six year 50% ABV bourbon from Luxro if you like Luxro dislike you right rebel then that might be the whiskey for you Whoa, I'm glad we were able to get through that I haven't been well lately I'm losing my voice a little bit I'm losing the energy to speak so thank you for staying with us. We like to kind of rattle off these radio videos quite fast. I know that the pace of this video and these uh, whiskey slug out for videos is normally quite fast. I'm not sure if YouTube give you the option to watch it on a slower speed, so I do apologize for people who don't like me talking fast. But however, that is kind of how we speak on these videos. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. I'm so proud of breath. Like I said, been ill lately, so I'm starting to get back into the, uh, so I'm making a little bit more videos because uh, I had like a backlog of like uh, a couple of weeks of videos, but my kids were ill, my wife had to leave to go to California short notice, and then I got ill. So I've exhausted all the backlogs of videos, so we're gonna knock out some videos here today. But hopefully you've enjoyed watching, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment down below as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.